lovers of lore, thank you for joining me for another old school magic lore video. Today we're going to be talking about the horrific origins of Thalids. Now before we do that, there are some of you, I'm sure, who wonder where I've been and what's going on with the Urza storyline. So what I'm going to do is after we talk about the current lore we're here to discuss, I will go over that as sort of a mini channel update at the end. All right, so let us travel to the ancient times, the Isle of Sarpedia, where multiple empires are locked in a struggle for survival. You have the empire of humans, elves, dwarves, goblins, orcs. There are all sorts of different factions vying for power. They are trapped in an ever-freezing world. This all happened after Urza ignited the Silex Blast and became a planeswalker. There was a massive fallout that rocked the world of Dominaria and ushered in an ice age. And as a result of this, the different empires ended up struggling amongst each other, mainly for resources, food being one of the biggest issues. So it turns out that the Thalids that the elves raised for food actually have a much darker and sinister backstory than I originally knew. And once I learned about this, I was like, okay, I want to share this with you guys. So ultimately, on Sarpedia, the elves of Havenwood were growing ever more desperate. Food was running out. They did not want to go outside of the Havenwood, right? Because all of the different factions, the truth about the Fallen Empire's time is that if all the empires had worked together, there probably would have been enough to go around. But instead, everybody chose to sort of close their borders and push their neighbors away, leaving everyone to fend for themselves. So the elves developed these fungus creatures known as thalids to use as a food source. But the origins of these thalids actually come from a much darker place. On Sarpedia, there was an evil group known as the Order of the Ebon Hand. So these were essentially dark necromancers, evil mages, dark soldiers, that sort of a setup, right? So they created their own particular servant class. Now, the differentiation between these and regular necromancy resulted in the thralls. And by that, I mean that normal necromancy involves reanimating the corpses of the fallen. But the thralls were actually an innovation where dead flesh was turned into living beings. So instead of creating zombies, this was actually the creation of the Thralls. Now the Thralls were horrific monstrosities that actually ended up running rampant and overtaking all of Sarpedia. We don't actually currently know if the Thralls would have been able to overtake Phyrexia itself. The level of the Thralls is so powerful that they might have actually been able to defeat Phyrexia, but luckily for the rest of the world, when Thralls took over the Isle of Sarpedia, they left it at that. They overran all the different empires and then ultimately didn't realize that there was anything beyond their own borders. They thought that the island they reside on is the entirety of existence. So the Thralls are the most horrific thing to come from the Sarpedian Isles, but they're also actually the seed of what would become Thalids. So the elves of Havenwood secretly and distastefully made deals with the Order of the Ebon Hand to gain essentially Thrall technology. So they weren't specifically creating Thralls, but the Thralls were used as a base guideline to create the original variation of Thalids. Now, originally, the Thalids didn't have any sort of sentience or real mobility. They were just kind of fungus clumps that would sit around and spew out saprolings, right? So these little plant beasts. And they were dull and kind of like, it wasn't a very flavorful sort of food. However, they had found a way to generate an endless supply of food for the elves. Now this all changed for them actually in the storyline that I've currently been reading from the book and Peace Shall Sleep and we'll actually go through that whole storyline. But in that storyline, I actually discovered that due to an inadvertent infusion of magic into the lands, essentially what happened was a rogue mage 
ended up in a Thalid field and was attempting to, basically attempting to cast a magic spell that had absolutely nothing to do with the Thalids, specifically actually had to do with dragon eggs. And somehow the Thalid field was able to absorb the magic into it. Now this rogue mage went ahead and tried to cast his spell a number of times each time as he drew the mana into him, it would all drain away into these Thalid fields. And as a result, the Thalids actually gained sentience. And once they gained sentience, obviously they were affronted by the fact that they were being used as a food source. And ultimately they rose up to overthrow the elves. So for me, finding out that these Thalids were originally linked to thralls and those horrific experiments is a pretty amazing situation. Now I know this isn't the biggest lore story, but I figured it would be an interesting little thing to cover for you guys because I said I'd give you a channel update. Basically what's going on is for the last two months, we were forced out of the place that we were living, looking for a new home and recording lore videos has been very difficult for a number of reasons. And honestly, one of the biggest stumbling blocks that I'm encountering right now is the sound quality issues that we have in the recording studio. So there is sound dampening foam on the way. We will ultimately get the studio all set up properly so we can record the lore videos. But for me, I want these lore videos to have a very high quality. I want them to stand the test of time. So it's important to me that the sound quality is very good. Now this video obviously is an exception. This was a scenario where a, I feel bad that we haven't put out a video in a while. B, I thought this was a really cool little lore snippet, so it seemed like a good opportunity to come and tell you guys, just give you a little tantalizing taste of what's going on with the uh, the Thalids and their evil origins, because we are actually going to cover the whole story that follows that rogue mage that infuses the Thalids and brings them to life, because there's a lot of interesting stuff about that going on in terms of uh, old magic lore. It's a, it's a good story. I'm really excited about telling you guys that story. Now, speaking of stories, obviously, some of you are wondering what's going on with the Urza storyline. Well, there are two more installments left in that current storyline. One of them is already recorded and in the process of being edited. So hopefully we will be able to get that ready within the next couple of weeks. It is a very time consuming process and work will go underway to write the script for the final episode and then also get that recorded. But unfortunately won't be able to record that until the sound quality issues have been resolved so that that video obviously meets the standards of all of our previous videos. But either way, I just wanted to come by, let you know the channel is still going. I do intend to get back more into a regular process of creating these lore videos so you can look forward to that. And so I just want to say a big thanks to all of my patrons who have chosen to stick with me during this time. Some people have chosen to depart and I do not blame them. I mean, at this point, there hasn't been much in the way of lore videos, so you don't wanna support something if you don't think creations are being made. So obviously that's totally fine. But those of you who understand the situation chose to stick around and keep supporting, thank you very much. I'm not gonna let you down. We're gonna have more awesome lore videos and good times coming. So thanks for coming by my friends. Remember, lore is life.